long time no see. And today, finally, I'm able to post a video after like two weeks. My apologies for keeping you waiting because um, my pregnancy is driving me crazy. And thankfully, my baby boy is okay. Uh, I'm at 25 weeks now and I have more energy to make videos. So I promise you guys, teachers, I will be posting more videos soon. Okay? Promise. Promise. So today we're going to be talking about the different payment methods for our private classes. Because, you know, recently due to the double reduction policy in China, a lot of millions of Chinese students have had the dilemma of looking for an English teacher. So uh, many of us Filipinos and uh, many of us ESL teachers have recently, you know, opened our doors to private classes. Now, how are we going to receive our payments from our Chinese students, from our students, let's say, from other countries, not only China, but let's say uh, Japan or Korea or Vietnam and so on. Uh, I'm going to be covering several options uh, that we have available here in the Philippines to make it more convenient for you to receive payments from your students. And if you would like to know more about private classes, you know, the things that you have to prepare, uh, strategies for you to have more students and so on, you just have to simply check out the description box because I'm going to be putting um, the video links to my other videos about private classes on the description box. To those of you who would like to have a more secure job and uh, be a part of an ESL company, my ESL company, Native Camp, the best ESL company, in my opinion. All you got to do is, again, check out the description box and send me an email at askteacherkaren at gmail.com. And I'm going to be sending you proven tips to pass your, your demo class, your interview, and so on. So that on top of your private classes, you can also have like a more secured and stable job with an ESL company because that's what I do. I combine, you know, having private classes with um, working for an ESL company. Thus, my income is more secured. So let's continue. So let's talk about the different modes of payment. Uh, teachers, um, let me start off with key reminders. Like, it's important for you to remember this or else you'll be sorry, or maybe your student will no longer want to book your classes afterwards. So these are the key reminders when it comes to payments, receiving payments from your private class students. Tip number one, do not ask payments per class. Instead, offer a package. What do I mean by this? Let's say you're the teacher who charges 25 RMB per class. Do not have the student pay 25 RMB every single time you have a class because it will just simply be impractical. Your students, every single time they make payments, uh, they will be charged with a transaction fee. And imagine if they're gonna be, be paying you, you know, once, every class, then they would have to simply pay uh, transaction fees over and over again instead of just paying one. Instead, offer a package. Uh, let's say I have a package here for 10 to 20 classes. It's 40 RMB or 315 Philippine pesos. And uh, for 21 classes and above, uh, it would be 275 Philippine peso for a 25-minute class. And um, that would be 35 RMB. And again, it's going to be a package. Therefore, when they make payments for 20 classes or more than 20 classes, then it's going to be more practical because they will only be charged uh, a single transaction fee. Um, reminder number two, have the student do a test payment. Teachers, I couldn't stress this enough, but you do not want to deal with money issues. Let's say the student made a payment. It's like uh, 5,000 pesos or 10,000 pesos, and then you didn't receive it. So what now? <laughs> Who's going to be at fault here? Is it the student's fault or your fault? Was there something wrong with the account number that you gave? Was there something wrong with the mobile number that you gave? Uh, we don't know, right? So you do not want to deal with money problems. So you got to have them do a test payment. Let's say for this student of mine, she uh, tried to transfer 50 uh, yuan to my account, and the, that's just 150 pesos. 
Uh, another student transferred 50 pesos, but there was a processing fee. So I only got 25 pesos and 92 centavos. And this is uh, a transaction in Japanese yen to Philippine pesos. As you can see, by transferring a small amount, at least you and the student would feel more secured and confident that, hey, the account details are correct. My payment will not go elsewhere and it will be successfully received by my teacher. Um, reminder number three. Never quote a teaching fee using your student's currency. May it be Japanese yen, may it be yuan, may it be new Taiwanese dollars. Uh -uh -uh, because you do not want your teaching fee to be affected by exchange rates, which changes every day. So you have to quote in Philippine pesos, and you have to make it clear that whatever the amount is, that should be the amount that you must receive per class. 315 Philippine pesos or 40 RMB, 275 Philippine pesos or 35 RMB. And my fourth reminder, inform your student that your fee does not cover processing or service fees. Every single time your students would transact uh, via Taobao, PayPal, uh, Alipay to Gcash, uh, WeChat Pay, and so on, there's usually um, a service fee, like a processing fee. You know, it's basically the amount that the software or the application or a company charges your your student for the convenience of not having to go to you know let's say uh, uh, kiosks or something to send money to you. I'm not sure what we call that. Call that. So it's like a convenience fee. So for instance, my student transferred 42 pesos and 80 centavos to me. Notice that I only received 25 pesos and 92 centavos because 1688 went to the service fee. So make sure you take that into consideration and, and, and make it clear to your students that you, the teacher, will not pay for the service fee. Your teaching fee does not include the service fee. So whatever the service fee is, you have nothing to do with that. It's not within your control. And you should still receive whatever amount you quoted them in Philippine pesos. If you quoted 5,500 pesos for 20 classes, then the total amount that you should receive after all the transfers and all would be 5,500 Philippine pesos. Okay? Now... These are the modes of payment. This is just going to be real quick because I'm going to start off with the easiest option. And this one is tried and tested. My student is from Shenzhen, China, and she used Alipay Hong Kong to transfer. Uh, the thing here is, since they're not using Alipay China, but Alipay Hong Kong, their account should be funded in Hong Kong dollars, not yuan. So uh, they have to have Hong Kong dollar currency and their Alipay Hong Kong account must be funded. So how do we do that? The student just has to, for step one, has to download Alipay Hong Kong. And of course, for step two, select Gcash or Sabwana, whichever you prefer, teacher. But really, why go to Sabwana if you have Gcash, right? Select Gcash. Then they would have to enter the amount that you must receive. And voila, you're going to be receiving the payment in like, a few seconds or a few minutes. It's actually real time and that's what I like about it. You're going to be getting the payment real time. And don't you dare uh, do or conduct private classes without asking for payments. Payment first before you do your private classes. Uh, option number two to those of you who have AUB bank account or a Chinese bank account, which is, by the way, highly complicated because for you to open accounts and, uh, you know, be able to uh, convert Chinese yuan or other currencies to Philippine pesos, you have to be like a registered business. You have to have like DTI registration and so on. It's actually a headache. That's why I will not be covering it in detail because I'm not a fan of option number two. It's For me, it's inconvenient. But, you know, for others, it's not inconvenient. But again, it's not my cup of tea. I'm just sharing it with you that this would be possible options. So if your student will be paying through WeChat Pay, 
or Alipay China, not Alipay Hong Kong. The only way that you would be able to get your, your money or your payment is if you have an AOB bank account or a Chinese bank account. That's the only way you would be able to and cash it. And thing is, you won't be able to get it real time. You have to wait one to three business days. So what if it's a holiday? What if it's a weekend? And again, this is why I'm not a fan of it. What I'm a little bit of a fan of would be option number three, via and cashier. In the Philippines, we have people who have AUB or Chinese bank accounts. And it's you, teacher, who will be paying them the convenience fee. A convenience fee of 150 pesos per scan. Let's say you need them to encash 10,000 pesos you have to pay 150 per transaction. If it's like 10,100, so it's already beyond 10,000, you already have to pay 300 pesos because that's two scans. So that's going to be like the convenience fee, 150 pesos or whatever amount, depending on how much you need to be encashed. And who will be paying for this processing fee? Is it you, teacher? No, it should be your student. Okay, once again, again and again, whatever teaching fee you quote them, 200 Philippine pesos, 315, 275 Philippine pesos, that should be the, the amount that should be on your hands before you teach them. Your service fee does not include the processing fee, so you should include it on the quotation. Let's say you charge 5,500 for 20 classes, uh, so that's going to be a, a, a 150 peso charge if you will be going through an encasher. You would have to quote 5,650 pesos for the payment, including the processing fee. And you will have to pay the processing fee to the encasher. And I highly recommend this lady. Uh, I met her <laughs> in, in Facebook on Facebook rather, uh, her Facebook name is June FV. And in my opinion, she's trustworthy, she's professional, she responds right away. And if you will be going through an encasher, you have to go through someone who is trustworthy and who has had so many transactions in the past. And you know, many people know her for being reliable and prompt when it comes to encashing. Okay, so again, I highly recommend her to search her on Facebook. Option number four would be Taobao to Gcash. Uh, actually, there's also an option to use like Shopee to Gcash. Uh, we also have Taobao to Gcash. They use this for online shopping. The cons would be lower exchange rates. So technically, your student is losing more money because again, you're quoting them in Philippine pesos, right? Uh, and that's also the reason why I don't want you to quote in RMB in UN, because let's say you, you quote them 25 RMB. And if there's low exchange rates on Taobao, then you teacher will be losing money. That's why you never quote in your student's currency, but you quote in your currency, which is Philippine pesos if you are Filipino. Uh, so they just have to simply go to the Taobao uh, application, click on Gcash, and then they just have to simply transfer the amount to you, and that's it. Uh, and the last one, option number five, is direct to PayPal. This is how I receive payment from my students from Japan. Um, the student just have to simply pull up the PayPal website, super duper easy, and just transfer the amount to you. They got to link a credit card to their PayPal, and then they transfer to your PayPal, and basically that's it. Uh, the thing is they can transfer to your Gcash, or they can transfer to your bank. I'm not a fan of bank transfers because bank transfers usually takes several business days, but when it comes to Gcash transfers, it's real time. So as you can see, uh, my student paid for 20 classes. It's 5,857, but this does not include the processing fee. So after all the processing fee, I only got roughly around 5,550. And I'm only expecting to get 5,500 and my student said it's gonna be her tip to me. So again, there will always be a processing fee. So the good thing about PayPal is that it's real time. They have higher exchange rates, but they have a 4% service charge, uh, just like the example that I've given you. But some of the teachers, they ask the students to enroll them as a family member so that there will be no, no more processing fees. 
So there you have it, teachers. These are the different modes of payments for us teachers who have private class students. Uh, once again, it depends on the country that you're teaching. It's a little bit different, let's say for Indonesian students, Vietnamese students, and so on. But what's important is before you start teaching your student, you have to receive the payment first, okay? But as mentioned on my previous videos, do not charge for trial classes. The reason why it's called a trial class is, is because like it's a free trial, just like when you have free trial for Netflix or, you know, Hulu or whatever, uh, whatever you'd like to test first. So uh, I highly recommend that you provide a free 15 minute trial class for the student to have a glimpse of your teaching style, for them to have a glimpse of what they will experience if they sign up for your services and so on. And then if they decide that they want you to be their teacher, well, good for you. You'll have uh, you know um, more private class students and you must be uh, able to receive the payment, send a contract, make all the terms clear first before you start teaching. For the method or way of how to make the service contract for private classes, I'll be covering that one on the next video. And teachers, if you like this video content, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, Teach a Karen, and comment below if you have any video requests. And to my loyal and loving subscribers, thank you so much for all your love and support. Again, I sincerely apologize if I was not able to post for like two weeks. Um, I'm hoping that I would feel better and so that I'd be able to post more videos soon. I'm going to see you and be a blessing to the people around you. Bye-bye.